Tiffany Featherstone is a fluid artist and has mainly focused on desert landscapes, botanicals and abstracts since moving to Arizona in the early 90s. She was heavily influenced by the cactus and copper mountains lining the beautiful turquoise skies. And this has encouraged her use of bright, vibrant and dynamic hues from mediums such as acrylic, gold leaf and mica. So Tiffany, I'd like to welcome you here today and thank you so much for joining us and allow our viewers to get to know you a little bit and Thank more you. about Thanks your work. Thank you for having me, it's a pleasure. You're so, so welcome. So let's begin um, by having you tell us a bit about where you're from and what living there. Well, I'm originally from Dallas, Texas. And as you mentioned, I moved to Arizona in the early 90s. Um, so I was born and raised a Texan um, and I only use it in severe cases of an emergency and it does come in handy to use my Texas when you need to. <laughs> but uh, so I've lived in Arizona longer than I've lived in Texas so this feels more like home to me now. Don't tell my family that. Um, <laughs> but I do love it here. Um, I feel like you know I moved here in my 20s so I kind of grew up you know my adult younger adult years here in the valley and I'll be honest, I wasn't crazy about the desert when I first moved here. Um, you know, coming from such a green, lush, you know, humid climate to a desert was a little bit of a culture shock for me. And I didn't understand the nature and the trees. Um, but it's really grown on me. I, I find that when I travel, I miss the cactus. I just, I love the climate here, you could be outside 360 days a year because there's that much sunshine. We might we might be indoor five days because of rain or cloudy weather, but it's a very um, outdoor minded, healthy kind of place to live. And I really enjoy that because I love nature. Yeah. So is there a specific environment, whether it be natural environment um, or a material that is I really, because I love nature, I do focus on landscapes, specifically the Southwest desert, uh, because that's just what's around me. It's easy to access that. Um, I focus a lot on acrylics. Um, I do incorporate other media, sometimes markers, sometimes pastels, sometimes, you know, I, I just kind of play around, but my main medium is acrylic and, um, because it's easy to pour and easy to work with. And uh, I think it captures the colors, it can capture the essence of the desert so well. Um, that's just, that's what I prefer. And pouring seems to be um, a really interest, it's a very interesting and almost a new way of creating paintings. What do you mix with the, with the acrylic paint? To well, that is top secret. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. No secrets. Um, so obviously, I do. Add, I, you have. I do work with additives. Um, for example, I will dilute the paint with water, and especially with mica. If I'm using mica, that's in powder form, powdered pigments. So I have to dilute that, and then I will add um, like Floetrol or um, and Floetrol is. How do I explain what that is? It stretches the paint. So you can use a smaller amount of pigment over a larger area. And it's originally it's used to get rid of brush strokes. So they'll use it for cabinet painting. And I that's why I pour, to be honest. I don't want brush strokes in my paintings. So I like that solid glass type surface. And that's kind of how I started using that. A lot of people will also use um, a pouring medium from Liquitex, which is essentially Elmer's glue. So that's another one you can use, but I don't prefer using that because of the way it dries. It's just my preference. I've used all of the things, but that's basically it. Low trial water and paint. So yeah. you've perfected the <laughs> art. So what's led you to want to create and now? Well, I started painting again back in, so I, I was never formally trained in art, I, in painting. I took some classes in high school and it was mostly charcoal, pastels, oil pastels, and things like that. So it was more of a tactile 
you know, fingers and things like that. And then once I got married and had kids, I wasn't painting. I was busy raising my family. And I would say in 2008, I started painting again. And, you know, I don't know, I guess I just, you know, as, an, as a creative person, we're constantly, you know, floating around and trying new things. I made jewelry for a while. I was a musician. I've done, you name it. I've, I've explored the, the creative fields. Um, and in 2008, I decided I'm going to try painting, which was new for me because I didn't know how to paint. I didn't understand how to use brushes or any of that. And in 2015 is when I sold my first painting. Um, so that it took me a little while to kind of courage. It's mostly courage and just self-esteem and, and learning something new and thinking, oh, you want to buy this? Wow. So I would say um, it's just taken a while and I didn't. I, I decided that I really recently wanted to just focus on art full time and that's what I'm doing now. Wow. Um, I was curious for our listeners as to how you went from beginning painting as something, obviously a very creative person, but you'd never painted before, to then starting it in 08 and then actually selling a painting. I'm curious how that how you went from beginning to actually being uh, a, a, an artist who has a character, yeah. at least. As a career, I've been a realtor for many, many years. So having that network of people and having that exposure, um, you know, I will say in 2015, really Facebook was the main source of social media. Um, we didn't have other, I mean, I know Tik, or I'm sorry, uh, Instagram was probably around then, but I, I wasn't comfortable using that at that time. So Facebook was my main source of social media, and I will say that that was probably the best way for me to share what I was doing. And I would just, you know, between selling homes, I would post, here's something I'm working on. And then someone would say, how much? I would like to buy that. And it just kind of happened naturally, and it's just continued to grow over the years. And uh, I've got many people who have multiple pieces of art from me, I'm quite a few collectors, so it's it's very endearing and makes me happy. So people are saying, oh, I'm going to delete my Facebook. I'm like, I could never, that's where I started. <laughs> of getting out. So what have you, how, or I should say, how have you developed your art career so far? How have I developed it? Um, I definitely am constantly learning. I'm constantly seeking other people who know more than I do, which is quite a few. I, I feel like I just want to ask questions and how did you do this? And I've, I'm a sponge. I just take in all the information I can. I've worked with coaches. I have, you know, lots of time online researching and trying to find the best way to uh, propel my career forward. So I would say it's a hodgepodge of a multiple, multiple things that have helped me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it sounds like there's just been a lot of forward momentum, just keeping going, keeping going, one step in front of the other. Has your style changed over time with all of the uh, the work that you've done? Absolutely, yeah, it has changed quite a bit. Um, when I first started, I did, um, I was working with a paintbrush and I was painting actual things you know, like pickles or any kind of still life in front of me. And... In 2012, I came across an artist, Arthur Brothers, who is, he basically pioneered the pouring method that I'm using. He is the inventor of this entire way of, of painting. And I joined as many groups as I could that had anything to do with pouring and learned whatever I could. So I went from abstracts with paints, or not abstracts, but uh, still life with acrylics to abstracts and just exploring this completely new way of painting and once I mastered the technique then I decided how can I incorporate this same method but in a finer art type um, style and that's when I kind of meandered into landscapes and making templates and things like that. So that leads me into my next question about your process. What is it? And do you have, you've talked about acrylic. Is that your favorite medium? Yes, it is. I wouldn't say I'm not open to other mediums. I love to explore new things. 
but for now that's where I'm at. Um, my process is, is a little tedious. Um, as I mentioned, I, you know, I, I have to mix my paint and I, and I'll say that the paint mixing is probably the majority of my time. Um, you know, I, I will take a board and I, I, I particularly prefer wood working with wood substrates than canvas. So I will draw what I want on a board and then I tape it and then I cut it out with an X-Acto knife, whatever I want to paint. Then I mix the paint, then I pour it and then I wait for it to dry and then I peel the, the tape, start over with another section of the painting. So it's kind of like a color by numbers, if you will, um, because you can only work in sections. So I have to kind of figure out Oh, those two things are touching and they're two different colors. So I can't, I can't pour those at the same time. I have to tape that off, pour this, wait for that to dry, then pour this one. So it gets a little tedious sometimes, but it's a very unique way of doing what I do. So Tiffany, how long does it take for the paint to dry when you talked about two areas that, that were touching yet? Yeah, that's probably the most frustrating part of what I do is literally waiting for paint to dry when I'm on a roll and I just want to finish something. It's like, come on. Um, and it depends on the size. It depends on the area, but typically 24 hours to 36 hours before it dries because it's pretty thick. So yes, because I would go crazy if I, you know, I can't, I can only paint so many hours in a day. And if I'm waiting on one section to dry, that takes two hours and then I'm done for the day. So I have to have multiple projects going because I my brain can't, going from real estate to this, I can't sit still. My brain is needs constant stimulation. So do your other interests influence your Yes, 100%. 100%. I'm very much outdoorsy. I love to kayak, I love camping, I love hiking, I love road trips. And what are all of those things involving but nature? So I'm constantly inspired, in fact, when I find that I'm in a low point where I may, maybe have artist block and I don't know what to paint or I'm like not super crazy about what I'm doing, I go out in nature and it always, 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 always inspires me. Lifts that block for you and just opens up. Yeah. So, so do you, when you're out and about, do you find solutions to the, the block that you're experiencing or do you find ideas for new paintings or both? I would say... Both, yes, um, but mostly inspiration for new paintings. I, If I'm at a gallery or if I'm at an ex exhibition of some type, that might solve a problem that I have where I see someone else's way of doing things. But for nature, that's more of, oh, that is, you know, what a great, uh, you know, painting that would make. Or, you know, I've got my camera, my phone is almost out of data because of all the photos that I take on my phone. It's ridiculous, honestly. Like how many versions of a mountain can you look at? Well, I can look at all of them personally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So describe the, when I say the best, I mean, this is obviously very subjective, but for you, describe the best piece of work that you've created so far. Well, I will say I very much enjoy uh, commission pieces. And I just finished a commission in February for a collector and they wanted something for their cabin, which is in up north in Arizona. And they just built it and it's just a stunning cabin. She sends me pictures of the cabin. She sends me pictures of the kitchen. She sends me pictures of the flooring and it's just blank walls. So we kind of had to come around and figure out what they wanted. And she said, you know, this is the color palette I like. And I said, okay, you know, they've got hunter greens and all these colors. And I said, do you, you happen to have Aspen in your area by the cabin? And she said, yeah, we love the Aspen. And I said, how about if we did some Aspen? And I sent her a, a picture of some Aspen I'd done back in 2017. And she was like, yes, that's what I want. So I kind of did my own I always kind of make every piece unique. I never do two pieces the same. I mean, it's impossible. And uh, surprise them with a little um, heart carved in the tree with their initials. It was, it was just so fun to paint this. And I was just given so much autonomy 
this is what we want. This is the size we want. You go for it. However you want to make it look. I'm like, oh, that's the best thing to say to me. I love it. So it was really fun and, you know, gold leaf leaves that I did. And it was just, I was really proud of that piece. It was six feet tall and it was very challenging, but so rewarding. Oh, that sounds like an artist's dream yes. to receive a commission like that. And then to be able to put your very personal embellishments on it uh, in that way, that's would make that very special. So what have collectors said about your work? I hear a lot about, you know, how the paintings make them feel because I use a lot of bright colors. Um, well, and, and I, I don't have to, for example, the Aspen were very muted. It was creams and grays and beiges, and it was very neutral, but it was still my signature and it had a very tranquil feeling to it. So I think more than anything is the emotion that is, is evoked from what I paint. People seem to say, oh, these colors, the colors, the colors, they're always drawn to the colors and, and the composition as well. But, um, I hear a lot of oh, it just makes me happy or it makes me feel calm. So it just, that makes me happy to hear that I can evoke an emotion in another person by something I painted. Yeah, that's really powerful um, that you can evoke that. And so when do you feel most creative? Um, you know, when I was younger, I would say that was late at night. <laughs> now, <laughs> I'm too tired for that. So I, I would say definitely in the mornings, um, I usually wake up and have my breakfast and my coffee and then I go for a four miler. And once I get home, I'm ready to paint. And that's just kind of my day. So I would say in the mornings is usually when I'm the most gung ho. I'm trying to be more, um, what is the word? Diligent about my creative time. And sometimes that isn't when I'm the most inspired, but if I get up and I do every day, it's just, that routine is good for my brain. Right. And so, which led to my next thought is, is there a time of day um, when you, when you're painting, do you, tr do you um, depict more? Would you say when you're thinking about the light, are you depicting more morning light, midday after sunset? You know, during the day, I'm lucky in where I live because it's such a bright Arizona's, all sun, you know, and I have uh, floor to ceiling windows and floor to ceiling windows. So I have so much light that I don't really notice if that impacts how I paint. It does impact, you know, later at night and I'm using artificial light. It's hard. Like I would notice the difference in, in when I'm photographing my work than if I'm painting because I know kind of what I'm working with. Um, so I wouldn't say that that really affects much, to be honest. No preference. Are there any textures and tones that you find that you gravitate towards in your work? You know, as I mentioned before, I don't want the brush strokes, which is kind of why I like to pour. So I like that smooth finish. However, when I, you know, as I mentioned, I'm cutting out the tape so that I have a, an exposed area. So when you're cutting it and you've got this area painted, there's a slight lip, I guess, because that is elevated since it's got paint on it. And so sometimes when you've got these two pieces up next to each other, one could be slightly higher or lower depending on how I mix the paint or how it dries. And that can be challenging. It can also be amazing. So it, I don't know that I, intended on that but that's kind of the one texture I would say that pops up but mostly I like that smooth I want people to kind of go how how did they you know I like that question I think it's great mm -hmm. um, and when it comes to tones any favorite colors that you find yourself drawn towards that you want to express for tones I would say I, I'm very much drawn to sunrises, sunsets, so those kinds of colors, that gradient, I love oranges and pinks, purples, really bright, fuchsia, things like that. So that's been kind of prevalent in a lot of my paintings lately, I'd say for the past year. 
Um, if I can incorporate pink, I'm going to. <laughs> okay, great. My favorite piece is probably Red Mountain. Um, that piece is very special. I, I don't know how much you want me to talk about it if we're going to go over it later, but the piece is, you know, it has the pink, has the pink in it. Um, and the story behind Red Mountain makes it really fascinating because it's a place you can't visit. You can't see it in real life. It's been banned to hikers and tourists. So, um, I left it, I left the mountain unpainted. It's, it's hand drawn to kind of add to the mystery of the mountain. Um, but I love that painting because it was so challenging. Um, and, and when we talk about it, you know, we can see how much detail went into that and pouring is quite a challenge. Oh, I'm sure it's such a, I think it's such a unique, um, art form and for someone to have worked on it and really mastered their craft the way you do. I can see why collectors are so drawn to your work. Um, so with that, are there any artists today, either past or present, who inspire you and influence your work? Timothy Chapman is a dear friend of mine and probably one of the main artists that I know who, who affected you know, he, he, he also focuses on desert landscapes and botanicals, but he has a little more of a whimsical approach to them. And um, just an incredible talent, color. He's just so incredibly talented. I, if you haven't heard of Timothy, I highly recommend checking his work out. Um, Mark Maggiore is another artist who I'm very drawn to. Our styles are completely different, but love his take on the Southwest. And I feel like anytime you see one of his paintings, you immediately feel like you are in the painting with the character that he's painted. It's just incredible craftsmanship. Um, Logan Maxwell Ajej is another one that I find just fascinating. And all three of these artists are so different from one another, but they all focus on the Southwest in their own way. Um, his Logan Maxwell, his more his is more kind of trippy cowboy art. I don't know how you would even describe it. It's just it's incredibly colorful and a little more animated looking, but it's just such a unique way of of um, presenting the Southwest. Incredible practitioners, all three, and I'm very influenced by all three of them. Mm. It sounds like there's an amazing artist oh community gosh. there. It's so in great. Arizona. Diana Hessen, another one. She's got incredible Southwest botanicals and her way of, of expressing a, a prickly pear blossom. It's just so wonderful to see all of these local cool artists. And I'm like, wow. I just feel so lucky. Yeah. You know? Right. To be a part of that and for you, obviously, to contribute what you do. So. We've almost likely heard the saying, um, a picture is worth a thousand words. Would you be kind enough to tell us a little bit about some of your favorite of course, paintings today? Certainly. So why don't we start with uh, oh, Latigo yeah. Trail, um, which is a stunning depiction of a desert environment. So if you could sure. tell us a little bit this about one, that. Uh, that's my most recent piece that I've completed. Um, a friend of mine, he's an avid mountain biker, and this particular Latigo Trail, which is an actual trail in the Sonoran McDowell Preserve here in the McDowell Mountains, he takes his bike and rides through there all the time. And he's also a very incredible photographer. And he happened to snap a photo of this trail. And I said, gosh, can I, would you mind if I painted that? And he was like, yeah, go for it. Um, Nick Koziupa, if you ever want to check him out. But he, he's always got these beautiful little perfect captions or perfect little snapshots of this beautiful city, this beautiful state that we live in. And I just couldn't resist. It's a three and a, I think it's a three and a half mile, maybe 3.7 mile loop. And it's just got stunning, stunning views of Saguaro, the mountains, wildlife, you name it, it's there. And I just couldn't resist. So of course I had to paint it. 
Tell us about just the tip of the cigarro what, and what area inspired this painting? That's one of my favorites. I would say all of these are probably in my top five. Um, just the tip of the saguaro is a, a saguaro that a, 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 an acquaintance of mine, she had this cactus in her front yard and just happened to capture it during a sunset. And the colors were insane. So I had to paint it. And um, it's in Tucson where we have, you know, Phoenix and Tucson kind of battle each other for which is the best city. Um, and they both have pluses and minuses in my book, but I find that the nature in Tucson, the mountains, the cactus, it's just irresistible down there. It's so beautiful. And I love the, the perspective that you use in that painting, the way you look as though you're looking up from, you know, yeah. part way. Just, yeah. uh, you're just getting part the tip way of up. it. So you kind of just see the very top of the mountain yes. or the cactus. And then you get this beautiful sunset behind right. it, which covers all the colors that I love. And it's just, yeah. That's yeah. the colors that you describe. It's absolutely stunning. You talked about Red Mountain earlier um, and how special it is because the everyday tourist or hiker um, can't yeah. actually see that. Um, tell us a little bit about the colors so, in Red Mountain. So, you know, Mountain. you've got the, the desert brush which is the, the challenge of getting all of those different colors kind of budding up to next to one another and then the, the shadow cactus. And then you've got the mountain, which I left unpainted. So it's just pencil. And then behind that, you've got the entire sunset, which is a gradient basically from yellow all the way to uh, probably a fuchsia purple color. And it was so challenging because of all the clouds. And I almost went blind cutting those out. <laughs> there was so much, but it was so worth it. And I think that's why it's my favorite because there was so much blood, sweat, and tears that went into that painting. I love it. I, it is also available. All of my paintings are available for sale that we'll be discussing today. Um, but Red Mountain is one that mm -hmm. I, I sometimes I think, do I really want to sell that? Because <laughs> it's so special. To me. Yeah, it's. I can see why. It's it's a stunning painting, and it's just. The detail in the cloud is amazing. The color and the the formations that you've been able to show uh, is is really eye catching. And I love the graphic sense of your of your work. Um, it's got such a modern vibe to it that I can see. Um, you know, designers and people like that, uh, interior designers wanting to um, decorate their their clients' homes with work such as yours. Um, Monsoon is interesting because it's um, surely not a depiction of a weather condition oh, in Arizona, but it is. right? So when you hear the word monsoon, you don't think of Arizona. You think of, you know, Southeast Asia probably. And when I moved to Arizona, I remember I would call back my friends in Texas and I would say, oh, it's monsoon season. And they would always laugh and chuckle. And I'm like, no, it, it actually is. Um, so we get monsoons here from July, usually around the 4th of July, all the way until Labor Day, sometimes a few weeks after, depending on the season. And it's basically 60 to 90 miles an hour winds with torrential rain. And it's it's actually, it's a scary time because lots of trees are uprooted, roofs are ripped off of homes. It's like, it's scary. And I came across um, Dr. Johnny William Malloy, who is a weather educator and I saw his his picture on Instagram and it was this gorgeous photo of a monsoon rolling in and it's literally a wall of dust and rain and you can see the cloud coming and when we have monsoons here you see like the weather reporters they take these drone shots and it's literally a wall coming at you and then we're down we're down for the night we know it's it's gonna be a rough one and this photo was just a single saguaro and the wall coming in. And I was like, that is the perfect photo because that's exactly what it looks like. It's like that very calm right before the storm. And so I had to paint that. And that one is, the colors in that one are, are so much, they're different than what I normally use because it's a lot of darks, browns and things like that. But it's just, everyone from Arizona is like, that's monsoon. That looks like a monsoon. That's a perfect monsoon. So I really enjoyed being able to capture something that people don't necessarily 
you know, equate with Arizona as a monsoon. And the colors that you've used, they, it doesn't look like it's a fearful event. It looks like it's just an amazingly like intense, natural um, happening with the colors that you've used, the way you've depicted it. You know, it's, it's, it leaves it open to interpretation as to whether you consider this incredibly exciting or whether it is something in fact to be feared or it's just all such a unique, almost mystical experience. Oh, that's great because so when you have I think a that monsoon is... coming, you think all of those things. It's beautiful. Should we worry? Is it scary? I don't know. You go through every one of those emotions <laughs> and you think it's a big one. We got to start, you know, so yeah. Well, well, you've, yeah, you, you have created that. You have expressed oh, that in the painting. So it, it's amazing. Um, and so for the final one question I've got is about Mermaid Rock. Is, is that yes. actually so a place? It's actually called Mermaid Mountain. I titled the painting Mermaid Rock. It's in Sedona. And most people, when you go to Sedona, most people go to Cathedral Rock, Bell Rock, and those are the more um, popular landmarks to go visit where the vortexes are and all the good woo-woo stuff that happens in Sedona. And Mermaid Rock is more of a local, um, more of the locals know about it. And so that kind of makes this a little more of a collector's mm -hmm. item because I've captured something that most people don't paint about in Sedona. And the point of this mermaid mm -hmm. is that it looks like a mermaid laying on her side and you can kind of see her hip and then it goes down into her fin and that's why they call it Mermaid Mountain. Again, the colors in that are just amazing. And such, I love the palettes that you use that would really blend, so, not blend, but would really accent uh, homes between the flooring and the wall colors. And for those people that use love natural textures. So Tiffany, thank you so much for giving us a glimpse uh, into your world today. It's been such a pleasure to learn about you and what inspires your artworks. Could you tell our audience how they could see more of your work um, and how they could potentially contact you in the future? Um, you know, my website, tiffanyfeatherstone.com. I offer original artwork. I offer prints of all my work. So if you're interested in doing prints, I also have that available. You can find me on all the socials, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. It's my name, Tiffany Featherstone. You can find me pretty easily. Uh, you know, being a realtor makes me pretty findable. So... <laughs> so when you talked about prints um are you if someone needed a print a certain size are you able to change the size in prints the, if the you piece uh, but most of the pieces that i have i can i can't go too i can't go too large mm -hmm. with some of them but i do have that capacity mm -hmm. yes to be uh custom with uh, with size if Wonderful. they need it well, thank you again, Tiffany. This has been so much fun. Um, and I'm sure everyone will be very excited about oh, getting to see so more of your work. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I had, it has been a nothing but a pleasure and I appreciate the exposure so much. Have a good day. Thank you so much.